Hello boys and girls, welcome to the show, it's Chris Ridden and today's United Kingdom Talk. Um, and you may notice those of you watching the show on YouTube or Google Video, or oh, incidentally we had a bit of a trouble with uh, YouTube in one of the shows this week, so I do apologise, the show was uh, I think a day late, those of you watching it on YouTube. I've no idea what went wrong, the, the show was sent up and then it got stuck on processing. Okay, it just got stuck there. So eventually I, I waited, uh, I give it a good 24 hours and it still wasn't moving. So I deleted it and re-uploaded it and it seemed to work. So apologies, uh, those of you who watched, uh, I think the show before the last one. Okay, it got a bit stuck. It was a, a whole day late and I don't like to be late. I really don't like to be late. One thing I don't like to be from work is late and sick. And I've often said, you don't have to be the best at what you do. But if you're never late and you're rarely ill, you know, you don't pull the wool over their eyes. You know what I mean now. Come on. You know what I mean, don't you, eh? No pulling sickies when you're not sick. It's all very well, especially the youngsters. I know. I know what it's like to go out on a Saturday night and be totally and utterly wrecked. I'm sorry, I do, I do realise now that there are people listening to this show now who are shocked and horrified to find out that I, Chris Reardon, international celebrity, award-winning in DJ, landlord, global broadcaster, environmental conservationist, pilot, master of merriment, connector and your fairy godmother could possibly ever have gone out at a weekend and got wrecked. Well, I, I mean, I haven't recently. Not recently, but there were times in the 90s, I have to say, where you wouldn't believe the states I used to come out of some clubs in. <laughs> but I always went into work. <coughs> always. Oh, <coughs> I'm going to die on air. Goodbye. <coughs> Not really. No, I'm still here. Don't worry, I'm still here. You thought that was it then for a moment. I shouldn't, shouldn't do things like that. That is asking for trouble, isn't it? Um, yes, you should always go to work. Even if you've been out all weekend, drag yourself into work. OK, now I'm sitting here today. Uh, as I say, those of you watching on YouTube, sorry about Tuesday, but another another little video thing. You may notice that I've moved the camera further back and you can actually see a little bit more of what's around me and I can kind of do things. Now, you may remember right at the beginning of the year in January, I had the other spare room decorated and my intention was to move the studio into the larger room. Now, I've kind of decided I'm not going to do that now and I'll tell you why. Number one, that room is slap bang next to my neighbours, OK? And the last thing I'd ever want to do is upset my lovely neighbours with sound. Now, I'm not a, actually a, a, at home, I'm not a loud person, but... Sometimes I might come here into the studio two or three o'clock in the morning and do some work, which involves perhaps talking into a microphone or playing some music or something like that. And the last thing I'd want is to wake them up and upset them. I would never want that. So that's one reason. The other reason is moving all this blooming stuff through. It's not so much the boxes. It's, it's the wiring up you'd have to do all over again. And in all honesty, I can't be bothered. I'd love a, The one thing I'd like in this room that I'm in at the moment is a new carpet. Because it really is a, almost threadbare in some places. But I can't be bothered. I can't be bothered to move. Um, but I've realised... If I just pull this this desk here back a little bit from the root from from the from the wall where the camera well the camera's not actually on a desk it's well it is uh, it, it, the camera's not on the wall rather it's actually on the desk it's on like a, an extra bit so we've got a, a bottom part of the desk and a top part of the desk and the camera actually sits on a pile of honestly. I mean, you wouldn't believe it. There's no professionalism in this room, I'm telling you. Look, I'm going to show you, right? <clears throat> How do you think this camera is situated? You ready for this? You're going to die when you see this, right? Right, so there I am. Now, look. It sits on top of a pile of CDs. Oh, incidentally, just in case you're wondering what that tube is, it's um, sterile aisle eye ointment got a tube I, I just imagine people thinking oh it's pile cream or something like that no it's not dear it's eye ointment sitting next to me all right <laughs> so the camera actually sits on this little top there and in front of me there you might be able to see uh, there's a couple of light bulbs as well in front of me and it just sits on top here you see like that 
And uh, I've, I've actually pulled it back a bit. There we are. So you can see a little bit more. Uh, my intention is to actually pull it back a bit further and, and put a, perhaps a small shelf on the wall or something. And then uh, that may get rid of the whiteness. I know the, the lights actually make my face a bit white. But the other lights were just awful, weren't they? They made me look like I had jaundice. Also got a little photograph there. And uh, behind me today, I have... Uh, yeah, it's okay, you don't have to watch. You don't have to watch the video, you see. This is the beauty of the show, because I describe it all, dear. You can close your eyes and imagine it. Okay? Behind me is my little watering can that I water my house plants with. And, of course, the wig that Suko sent in. We got the cowboy hat from Susan. We got the mirror ball revolving above me there. And we got a little teddy bear that Ash gave me, oh, year and a half ago now, that I've never thrown away. <laughs> you see, even I was loved once. <laughs> anyway, that's enough of that. All right, so just to let you know, I've pulled the camera back a bit. hope it, you might not even blooming notice, I don't know. What else? Oh, yes, my garden at the moment is smelling of the seaside. Isn't that strange? Because... Yesterday, I've got this big bag of uh, garden fertilizer for the autumn. So it's supposed to, it's a, f a feed and weave weed thing from Evergreen. And you put it into this spreader thing and you literally march it up and down the grass. Well, yesterday we had rain predicted. OK, now the rain wasn't supposed to come to the afternoon, but I got up in the morning and I noticed it was already rather damp outside. And it does say on the instructions that you're supposed to put this stuff down when it's damp. OK, but not when it's raining. Now, I did learn this last year. Because last year I did exactly the same thing. I had one of those push along spreaders. Now, I did buy the cheapest one I could find in the garden centre. That turned out to be a bit of a mistake, and I shall tell you why. Number one, I didn't really take... This is... I'm going back last year now. Number one, I didn't really take much notice of the instructions, OK? So what I did, it was kind of drizzling a bit. So what I did is I poured this powder stuff into my spreader. It's, 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 a little, it's, it's almost like... Um, how can I explain? It's like, it's like a little trolley, really. But it's only got two wheels. It's like a, a two-wheel trolley. Like, like, like a wheelbarrow. A bit like a wheelbarrow, OK? But it's only two wheels. And at the front of it, you have like a box type thing. And in that, you pour your fertiliser come weed killer stuff, right? So I poured it in there and it was drizzling slightly outside. So I then started pushing it up and down. And at first I noticed the stuff was coming out. But as I was going on, I noticed that it, it wasn't coming out properly. And of course, what had happened is that the rain that was coming down, albeit very fine, had got into the um, uh, fertiliser stuff and it was all clogging the holes up. So I learnt a lesson there not to do that again. This year, of course, what's happened is I've got the, uh, the, the, the big packet of fertiliser and I went and got my spreader. For, oh, sorry, I just hit the microphone. I went and got my spreader from last year and I noticed all the little holes were clogged up. I thought, well, I better try and un unclog those first. So I've got a stiff, one, a stiff brush. I was going to say, it <laughs> doesn't matter. I've got a stiff brush and I brushed all the little holes and it looked to me like it was OK. Anyway, so I then chucked all this stuff in, chucked all the stuff in the little um, box on the front and I started walking up and down. And I very quickly became aware that nothing was coming out. Or very, very small amount. So I thought I'd better have another look at this. And I'd already filled up this box. So I then had to go and get the washing up bowl and pour, which was dry. I made sure it was dry because I'm not going to make that same mistake twice of getting this fertiliser stuff wet. Poured the stuff into the um, washing up bowl, okay? And then I turned the thing upside down. And I started pulling the, the, the plastic thing that's supposed to let the stuff out. And, of course, the blooming thing snapped off, didn't it? <laughs> I am not a DIY person. I've told you this before. So the whole thing snapped off. I thought, well, that's the end of that then. 
So I then, in a mad rage, snapped the whole thing in half and threw it in my bin. I chuck it out. Get rid of it, dear. Get rid of it out of my house. Gone. All gone. Get rid of it, dear. <laughs> you see, that's what you have to do. When it doesn't work anymore, you have to get rid of it. Push it to the side. In the bin it went. Chucked away. So, I then thought, oh, well, I really wanted to do this now. Because I don't know about you, but when I want to do something, I want to get it done. And I decided to do this. It still wasn't raining, OK? I then jumped in my little car and I went down to the garden centre. And once again, they had the one that I had bought before in there, which was relatively cheap. I think it was about £10. But they also had in the one in there that was £30. And, I mean, you only had to look at the difference in the quality. It was so easy. The, the, the other one had great big wheels. And all together looked a better make. So I... I, I pulled all the stops out and I bought the expensive one for £29.99, dear. God. And I was also attracted by the little label on the front of it that said, Easy Assembly. Now, how many times have we seen that, girls and boys? Those words, Easy Assembly. Yes. So I purchased the item, jumped back in my car, and I got home. And I thought, right, well, I'll just quickly put this together. And I'll go and do the uh, lawn, and then I'll go swimming, because I actually got up quite early yesterday. I say early, 10 o'clock. That is early for me, OK? So I then opened the box. Did he open the box or take the money? Open the box! Take the money! Who is it? It was an old TV show. You might have known that one. Opened the box and emptied everything out. And I looked and I thought, oh, my God. There's bits of plastic, bits of metal, bolts, wing nuts and washers. And I got the instruction book and I thought, oh, God. And I don't know why, but when I look at the pictures, they usually have little pictures of what you have to do. And I just can't work them out. Easy assembly, it says on the box. I didn't think it was easy. But I'm pleased to say I did complete the task. After half an hour, the job I would assume would have taken a real... I was going to say a real man there. I bet Wayne from Anonymous, who incidentally is a man. We've, we've, we've worked out he, he, is, he is actually a man, Wayne and Anonymous, OK? I reckon it would have taken him ten minutes to do. It took me half hour, but never mind. It was done. It's done. And then I went outside, I thought, right, I'll do this now. And I thought, I'll wheel it round to the shed. And as I went up, went around, I thought, oh, God, it's raining. And it had started to rain, hadn't it? But not to worry, not to worry, because I thought, well, well, I'll use this time, I shall now go swimming. So I went back to my car. Usually I cycled to the swimming pool, but the car was out and it was raining. So went back to the car, went swimming, came back, the rain had stopped. So I then went back into my little shed, Filled up the little thing with um, the fertiliser stuff again from the washing up bowl. And sprinkled it all over my lawn. And you could actually see it coming out this time. And where it was left on the lawn, quite a lot of it. And I did the front and the back and that used up the whole packet. And I'm glad about that because I don't like, you know, when you buy too much stuff. I think it's always such a blooming waste that is. So I used up the whole thing. Brilliant. Put my new spreader back in the shed, ready for spring. Oh, yes, we've got to look at... Garden, us gardeners must look ahead. But, oh, incidentally, talking of gardening, I, I don't know if I meant... I don't think I did mention this, but I actually bought a pepper plant about six weeks ago. I mean, I'm admittedly very, very late, but nevertheless, I bought a pepper plant, and I've got little peppers growing on the plant! I must, if we get another show in the garden, then uh, then I'll have to show you that, OK? Little peppers. I mean, they're very tiny. Very, very small at the moment. I mean, one mouthful and the thing would be gone. But nevertheless, I've got little peppers growing in my garden. Never grown peppers before. I've done tomatoes, cucumbers. Um, What else have I done? Peas. I've never done, never done peppers. I like peppers, don't you? So that's it. It's all spread. And I put it down and that was that. Then, what did I do then? Uh, I think I then came up for my afternoon nap. Right? 
And then when I got up in the evening, I thought, I thought, I can smell, I can smell the seaside. And I thought, where's that coming from? That a lovely smell, really nice smell, just a bit unusual in my house, considering that I'm nowhere near the sea. And I opened the door and this smell hit me of the seaside. It was lovely. I mean, I practically ran upstairs and put my trunks on and just stayed there. Stood near there looking for some water to swim in. But I then realised that I wasn't near the sea. And you know what it was? It was the, um, the fertiliser. And I thought, why does that smell of the seaside? Anyway, I didn't think any more about it. Went to work. Uh, Bingay last night was, uh, to be honest, was very disappointing last night. I don't know why, but it was really very quiet. And a complete opposite to Bingay the week before, because that was really busy. Anyway, not to worry. Um, come back, went to bed, that was it. Got up this morning, and in, I mean, I, I just could smell that smell immediately of the seaside again. So... I noticed, picked up my mobile phone, and uh, I noticed there was a missed call from uh, my friend Wayne the Butler, who at the moment is in Geneva, in Switzerland, La Suisse. And I rung him up, and he's like, Oh, hello, Chris, how are you, dear? Because he's very posh, Wayne. He, he don't talk like me. Oh, hello, Chris, how are you? Oh, it's lovely to hear your voice. That's how he talks. <laughs> Oh, he's great, my friend. I've known him for years. Lovely bloke. He's looking. What's he doing at the moment? You know, he does butlering and all that sort of thing. And at the moment, he's looking after a family for a few weeks uh, at their holiday home in Switzerland, which is lovely. And they're very pleased with his work and everything. Anyway, he's got a day off today and he, he's gone walking up the mountains. He's like, oh, oh, hello, Chris. Oh, just a moment. Um, let me have a rest. I've been three hours walking up the up the mountains, and I looked at the watch. And it's, I said, Wayne, what time did you leave? It's only half past twelve now. He said, Chris, I do get up very early, and I always remember Wayne. He did want me to go on holiday with his one women once. Oh, can I could just imagine going on holiday with Wayne? He'd have you up in the morning at seven o'clock, ready to go out and do things. Oh my God, that's not my idea of a holiday, dear. We need to have a rest. Although I do like. Doing things on holiday. I will admit that. Anyway, so he's going up the mountain. And he's got one of those walking sticks that he bought to do this sort of thing. And um, I said to him, I said, it's a very strange, Wayne. My garden at the moment is smelling of the seaside. He said, what did you put down? I said, some sort of fertiliser. He said, and Wayne knows about these things, you see. His mother has got a lovely garden in Kent, so I knew he would know about these things. You see, I'm very lucky in my life, really. I think if, if I ever want to know something about something, I just pick up the phone and I kind of instinctively know who knows what about what. And Wayne, I knew, would be able to answer this question. So he said to me, oh, there'll probably be seaweed in the, uh, the fertiliser. I said, seaweed? He said, yes, have you still got the packet? I said, no. I said, oh, hang on, it's in my green wheelie bin outside. So I took my phone, went out the house, went to the wheelie bin. Went in there, on top, fortunately on top, is the fertiliser packet. Right, picked up the packet, straight away I saw it on there in big letters, contained seaweed. So that's what it is. I've put seaweed on the garden and it smells fantastic it's a lovely smell it's not unpleasant at all i mean I've, i'm sure i remember before putting stuff on the garden it smelled a bit how can i put this uh metally it smelled sort of metally is that you ever read that at all not very nice anyway but uh, this is a lovely lovely smell of seaweed so I'll, i i shall have to find the same sort of stuff i think in the spring very nice indeed has anyone else ever done have you ever done that sort of put all your stuff on the lawn and smelt the seaweed it's beautiful Beautiful. Evergreen was the make of that one. Although there are, of course, uh, other makes, uh, presumably, that uh, contain seaweed extract as well. The Evergreen is the one that I got. All right. Now, uh, there is an email address to the show. And the email, if you'd like to join in, is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Be lovely to hear from you. All right. chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. 
Okie doke then. Let's have a look at uh, some of our emails. Oh, hang on, I've got it confused here. Uh, first of all, we left our last show off halfway through an email from Tammy, who's uh, in Florida. Here we go. Uh, oh, I think she was in... Fl Just a minute. Right. Yes, she lived in Florida from 99 to 2006. That's right. And this is from Tammany. She was telling about uh, uh, International Drive and Orange Blossom Trail that I, I had no idea used to be used uh, for prostitutes. It wasn't like that when I was there, dear. What a chick. Do you know what? I went walking up and down the Orange Blossom Trail for hours on end. Not a single person offered me money. I was very disappointed. <laughs> um... And Tammy went on to say, halfway through her email, you also mentioned the grocery store Publix. My husband grew up in Lakeland, Florida, which is the headquarters of Publix. So it's, it's, I, know, I know it sounds stupid, but when I go on holiday, I do like to browse in supermarkets. Because also, I mean, even here, you go in the different supermarkets. Yes, of course, a lot of the... It's just the way it's laid out. And everything is so different in, in supermarkets. Um, we used to have um, a supermarket here called Quick Save. I'm not sure that that one's still around. But that was kind of rough and ready. Just they'd get the boxes of stuff and just cut a hole in the front. And you'd go and kind of get what you wanted. Right? And then you've got the other end of the supermarket thing. I suppose you could include Harrods Food Hall. And that's really posh. And then, of course, you've got everything in between. And I do like to have a wander around supermarkets when I'm in other countries. That might sound a bit mad to you, but I do. And Publix was my favourite supermarket in Florida, right? Um... Tammy says, and yes, Publix are in other states besides Florida, mostly in the southern part of the United States. As a matter of fact, when we were planning our move away from Florida, Publix was one of the things we looked for in our new city. Yeah, I can, I can completely understand that, my love. I dare say that we might not have moved here if there wasn't a Publix. She says, I'm joking, kind of. Oh, I don't know about that. I know how your ladies' minds work. Yes, you need your local supermarket there, don't you, my love? She says, there is even a kind of community on Facebook called I Her Heart Publix. You know, as in heart, love. I Heart Publix, I love Publix. But then again, people will make a club out of anything, won't they? Yes, they certainly will, I'm afraid, Tammy. And I've seen some very odd clubs in my time. I've even worked at a couple of very, very strange goings on that I go, there's no way I can go into them on this program. But kind of when you're in that um, situation of work, you kind of, you close your eyes. Well, you don't close your eyes, obviously, but you, you close your mind and get on with the job. But I have seen some very, very strange sights. I'm telling you that now, my loves. Oh, I couldn't possibly go into them on here, not on this family orientated program, okay? She says, if you get back to the parks, Disney, Universal, SeaWorld, you won't be disappointed. Uh, she's talking about Florida now. Because the last time I was in Florida, I think it was 2000, as far as I remember. So eight years ago now, quite a long time. She says, they have made some amazing changes. Epcot is my absolute favourite Disney park. And we went there all the time. They have added some cool rides. Soaring is my best new ride, in my opinion. Oh, that don't sound like my cup of tea, that one soaring. S-O-A-R-I-N, she's saying. That, to me, sounds like a very fast roller coaster. And believe it or not, Tammy, I don't like fast rides. You know those are the sort of rides that go mad round a roller coaster or that throw you up in the air? And I don't understand anyone that can want to do bungee jumping. What is all that about, dear? Please tell me. I can't get... Can't get me head around why you would want to be terrified like that. What's it all about? 
She says, enough about Florida and more about you. I just adore your show and think you're the most entertaining man. Thank you very much, uh, Tammy. It's very nice of you to say that. I do have some faults. My biggest fault, and I don't know why, why it is, is having to clear my throat. Now, while I'm in the studio, it, it seems to be that I need to do it more than when I'm outside. But I do have a button here. So anyone listening to the show won't hear me clear my throat. Anyone watching the show will actually see me doing it, but you won't be able to hear me doing it like this. See what I mean? Which is pretty marvellous. And I, I don't know why that is. I keep meaning to mention it to the doctor when I go for something else, but I, I rarely go to the doctor anyway, so I don't know. Um... Let me see. But seriously, she says, um, she she says, uh, your shows are the ones I look forward to hearing the most. Keep up the great work. Oh, yes. I'm glad that Joy is doing better. Yes, she is. Um, and that's from Tammy. You can read this show on air if you want. And uh, I did reply to her and I said to her um, that I quite like the Magic Kingdom best on the Florida thing. And she says, ah, you like the Magic Kingdom then. I'm going to the Haunted Mansion. Oh, I like that one. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Sorry, some sort of haunting noises there. And I also mentioned that I wasn't keen on the Disney Animal Kingdom. Now, I, I like animals. I like them. Um, um, I'm not too keen on zoos. I don't like to see tigers and um, elephants and that enclosed in um, cages and things. I get quite upset with that. Um, but yeah, I love animals. Uh, but the Disney Animal Kingdom, I found, was a bit of a di dis disappointment, particularly. Um, if I remember rightly, they've they've built like a, a mountain with trees, but the trees are not real. Is that right? Do you know where I mean? I'm talking about Animal Kingdom in Florida. There is an area there that you, I'm sure you go in and there's a massive, like, hill or a mountain with trees on. But the closer you get, you suddenly realise they're not real. And I, there's one thing I can't bear, and that's plastic plants. I think it's awful. Oh, dreadful. And plastic flowers. Do you know, even at the cemetery, when I go and do up mum and dad's grave, you see graves and they've got all these dreadful, dreadful plastic plants on. And flat. Oh, that door's knocking. One minute open that door there you didn't did you know that was a door behind me there eh? yes i'm not not really not keen on plastic flowers and things like that um but it, it didn't look real to me the animal kingdom and uh, tammy says yes animal kingdom was also my least favorite as well the animals were always hiding though i did uh, once get to sit and watch the big cats go for a swim yeah i'm, I'm trying to remember trying to remember that i actually i, I don't remember an awful lot about the Animal Kingdom. So uh, thanks for the email there, Tammy. I'm sorry you're, um, you and indeed uh, everyone else has been waiting a little while for your emails to come up. Uh, there's just been so many of them. That's, that's, that's the only reason for that, OK? But I, I do try and get through them all, as you know. Uh, let's say hello to uh, Susan. Oh, and Susan, I meant to tell you, when I bought that fertiliser for the garden, do not worry, I checked on the back and it said... Pets need not be kept off the lawn, OK? So they're quite safe for pets, according to the packet. Uh, Susan says, Hi, Chris. I just stopped to write you a quick note. I've been extremely busy at work learning new billing procedures and got two weeks behind on your shows. Don't worry, my love. I'm two weeks behind on the emails. So that means you must have been waiting four weeks for this. <laughs> but I love you, Sue. I love you, Susan. Susan bought me this hat, look. Yes. Oh, oh, it's all collapsed. It's all collapsed. One minute. I've got my Dallas hat. Yee-ha! I don't know why I'm in a good mood today. I think it's because I'm talking to you. It is. That would be the reason I'm talking to you. I'm not, never sure about... You know when you're wearing like a cowboy hat? I've got, I've got a TV over here. That's why I'm looking to see what... Do I want... Do I need my ears out like that? Look at that. Look. Eh? I've got my ears outside the hat. Or... Do you kind of put the hat over the ears? I can't decide. Da, 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 da. Oh, it's da oh, you're going to see Dallas soon, aren't you, Susan? Susan is going to Southwark. Yes, one minute. Put that back up there. Susan is going to Southwark 
for the Dallas reunion party. $250, my loves. Worth every penny, isn't it, Susan? That must be soon, isn't it? It's the beginning of November, I think, isn't it? Anyway, uh, she says, I'm still trying to catch up, but I'm still listening to last week's shows. Don't you worry, my love. I understand. Better late than never. Yes. Anyway, I heard you ask me about Katie walking off and leaving meat and then returning later. Now, Susan reckons she does not like the meat. She was not raised on raw meat, and so she may not like it. Give her what she likes, even if it's canned or dry cat food. I would rather have a happy, contented cat than one that is unhappy. Absolutely, my love. Absolutely. My cat does the same thing when I try to feed him chicken breasts. He walks off, and when he sees that there is nothing else coming, he will eat it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we love him, don't we? I don't feed them to him anymore. The things he loves whole... The thing... Hang on. The thing is he loves whole Cornish hens. I don't see what the difference is. Well, maybe it has to look like a hen. <laughs> I was reading the newspaper the other day and apparently there's a lot of people here in the UK now um, taking on hen keeping and, uh, so that they get fresh eggs and things like that, which is uh, that's a nice thing, isn't it? I couldn't have them here because the cats would have their heads off as soon as I got them. Also... Regarding using credit cards out of the country, I don't think that is what the problem was. You remember, um, we've been talking over a couple of shows now about people who have had problems using their credit cards when they go to another country for a holiday. Whether it's from here to America, or indeed from America to here, or, or whatever. I had the same problem the first time I went to Orlando. I was using my American Express card quite a lot. I usually don't charge a lot of things, but I thought it would be easier than carrying cash. After a few days, they started flagging my account so that they had to check my ID and then wait for approval before I could purchase things. I was told the reason they did this is because of the increase in credit card thefts. The, usual, the unusual amount of activity on your card will trigger the computer to flag your account. It's very annoying and embarrassing when you are in line to purchase a ticket and people are behind you. I guess this is the price you pay for using your credit cards every day. Yeah, you see, I mean, uh, that, that, that could have been the reason I had the problem, really, I think, because I, I don't use the credit card very often, really, I suppose. Um... I mean, I say that I don't buy an awful lot of things, um, although I suppose really I do use the credit card for most things, but there's not a lot of them, if you see what I mean. So when you go on holiday and you use it all the time, suddenly it, it must they must notice that sort of thing. Yeah, we'll try and write again soon. I'll catch up on your shows uh, next week. Goodbye to CR. Thank you, SC, uh, Susan, our cat lover. Now, there is a possibility I'm going to sneeze in a minute. I can feel it. I can feel it in the top of my nose. Oh, uh, uh, no. What? Oh, no, it's not going to happen, is it? Oh, well, maybe that's a good thing. We don't like to sneeze on the wires all the time. Now, um, here's someone I haven't heard of from a long time. And he used to listen to my show on Offshore Music Radio, which is uh, still around. But, uh, excuse me, I'm just having a bit of sniff. Have I got a tissue? I haven't got a tissue in here. Oh, dear. Um, oh, I really need to, to blow. Can you hang on a second while I just... I've got, I'm going to have to go to the uh, toilet and just get a bit of tissue paper. Stay there a second. There won't be a minute. Do you do that with your nose? You've got to, got to give it a good blow, haven't you? Listen to that. that uh, here we go. That's better. Yeah. Oh, that's better. Sorry. Right. Uh, this is from Leo, 
who used to listen to a music show that I did playing 60s and 70s music. Um, I think it was a year before last now. It's quite a long time ago, Leo, isn't it? And he says, I guess you remember me from your shows. It's Leo in Norway again. Up and going after a long silence. Yes, I wondered where you were, sir. I'm at, oh, I can smell that sea, that seaweed drifting in the window. It's lovely. I must say that I have been unfaithful to you. Oh, Leo. Leo, how can you do that? I have been all over the internet listening to a lot of music stations and so on for months and months. Even though I used to listen to your United Talk, United Kingdom Talk, back in time, music stations are also great. So you got some time off for good behaviour. The last four of your shows have again triggered my laughing muscles. <laughs> And I've started downloading your podcast for my Nokia Express music phone. Then I can play them anywhere I want. Kitchen, car, greenhouse and so on. Don't you feel it's a good thing for me to get some laughs into my life again? We've all got to laugh, my love. We've all got to laugh. Laugh at life because it's laughing at you. If I've written... Um, if what I've written above has not given you an ego trip, I don't know what will. Life here in my part of the world, which incidentally is Norway, okay, is quite different from England. People are more reserved here and I find it hard to take. If you talk to a stranger here, they will wonder if you are okay in the head. Not everybody off because there are many like that. <laughs> I've had a very hectic summer and my weight has gone down from 82 and a half kilos to 69 kilos. God, how on earth did you do that? Come on, share your secret, Leo. We need to know. We need to know. Not bad, I guess you will say. Uh, or what would that be in pounds? Oh, I, I don't know. I've no idea what that would be. He says, or to put it another way, nearly extra large or large to small in gene sizes. You've done well there, boy. You've done well there, I have to say. That makes me a happy man indeed. He said, that was my ego boost. Yeah, you, you, we need that. We, we do need that. Now my eyes are starting to close themselves and this will be all for tonight. Just wanted to say a loud hello to all the listeners of the show. A merry, merry gang indeed. Love from Leo. And he also sends a picture of a photo taken in July, close to where they live, uh, with his camera on his mobile phone. A beautiful picture. Um, I've only got to, I've printed it in black and white, but basically it's him sitting on front, in the front of, uh, I think that's, a, I'm not sure if that's a sea or a lake actually, but a lovely picture there. Thank you very much, Leo. Nice to hear from you, sir. Don't be a stranger, okay? Don't be a stranger. Don't forget the email address, chris at United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk chris at united kingdom talk dot co dot uk now um joe's emailed in joe from american talk usa dot com he does his own podcast american talk usa dot com and uh, if you listen to the latest one you should be able to hear him i think he'll be talking about his recent trip to peru where he did good things for and people less fortunate than ourselves and joe writes where should Chris, United Kingdom Talk, Joe, American Talk, USA.com, Ross P, Suko, James and Madam Aries, and everyone else meet? Do you remember, a few weeks ago, I was saying, if we ever, ever tried to all meet up somewhere, where should we go? It needs to be somewhere neutral, I think. And Joe reckons the US Virgin Islands or British Virgin Islands. What do you reckon? And he says, Amy, his dear wife, will pay for it. Oh, thank you, Amy. Can we all have business class, please? <laughs> well, I, I like the sound of that now. When he sent this out, he was in Peru, but I know he's back now. He said, should we invite Phil and Mike from the Britain Yankee as long as Amy is paying? Of course. Although they're, they're having a, a bit of a break. Are they having a bit of a break at the moment, the Britain Yankee? I did get an email from them because... Uh, uh, I was concerned and he's uh, not having the best of times at the moment. So um, 
I don't know, maybe they won't be able to come. But Joe has also sent in another email since. Now, what have I done with that? Is it on the screen or is it on the printer? One minute. Because that's only just come in, that one, and I wanted to read it out. Let me see. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. And Joe writes, he's, he's now back from Peru. That's quick. Quick his visit to Peru. I've, I've just messed up, read an email telling you that he's there. And now I'm reading an email telling you that he's back already. He was only there two minutes. <laughs> he says, just returned to the USA this afternoon. Thought I'd share a few pictures from Peru. The landscapes are fantastic. However, I thought you'd enjoy the picture of this little boy. Mannix, as he, uh, Mannix, I think it's Mannix, M-A-N-I-X, Mannix, as he admires my friend Charles playing the piano. Mannix is 17 years old. He was hit by a car at the age of nine. He sustained a brain injury, lost his left arm, and also his legs were severely damaged, causing him to walk with an odd twisting gait. He has not spoken since the accident, and he only grew to be about four feet tall. But he hugged everyone in our group of 13 doctors and nurses so many times that it hurt. No greater love could have ever been shown by another human being towards his fellow man. Shaw made me appreciate my life a lot more. Thought you'd appreciate these. Nice to be home from your pal, Joe. So thanks very much for that, Joe. And um, indeed, he sends a little picture of a young lad in Peru, the one who had the accident. And there's Joe's friend playing the piano. And look on this little boy's face. He looks so happy to be able to see someone playing the piano like that. So that, that's a, a lovely story there, uh, Joe. Really is nice. And uh, glad you had a nice time there. Joe also included some pictures of the countryside, including one really fantastic picture. And it, it looks like some sort of old settlement that, that Joe is standing in front of a mountain. And down here, I, I wonder if that's some sort of... Uh, oh, I've just, just knocked my photo over there. It's just some sort of settlement there that uh, possibly from years and years ago, is it? I'm not quite sure about that. Thank you, Joe. Great pictures there, fantastic pictures. Oh, I've printed that off twice, look at that. Oh, I've, I've wasted paper, Joe. I'm not happy with myself now. I've wasted paper. Thank you, Joe. Lovely. Now, where are we going to now? Um, let me just check. Getting confused here. Oh, there we are. Uh, another one from uh, Robert in Iceland. I'm, as I say, I'm sorry, some of these are a little bit old now, but I'm, I'm trying to catch up, as you know. Chris and dear friends of United Kingdom Talk from Robert in Iceland. As you may recall, my family and I are travelling to Orlando next May. The greater, If you're going in May, you'll be able to see the fantastic lightning storms they have here. It's something perhaps I wouldn't have thought you would experience in Iceland. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's one minute, one minute it's really, really hot weather. And the next minute you get this wind. This is how it happens. I've experienced this many times there. You suddenly get this wind comes from nowhere and then it chucks it down. It absolutely pours down lightning and everything. And a few minutes later, it's all gone and you would never have known it occurred. Amazing weather there. The greater part of our vacation will be within the Disney complex, but we are faced with the problem of visiting SeaWorld. And now at long last, my question, my internet investigations have proved two options, because I weren't sure how to get there and all that business. Using a private bus service, Mears for example, or using public transport, Lynx. Can I ask your listeners and friends as to their opinion Regarding the public transport option. Yeah, you see, he's going to uh, Disney and they want to visit SeaWorld, but I don't think he wants to get a car to drive, so he wants to do it all by public transport. What do you think of those two options? OK. Keeping in mind the fact that we have two young girls, ages at the time of travel will be nearly six and four. All right. 
So any of you Florida people, can you help us with that? What do we think of the public uh, bus service Mears or the public transport service Lynx or Linux? L-Y-N-X. I'm not sure how to say that. Please email the show and help a friend in distress, a friend in need. Okay, it's Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. That photo's sort of gone in the funny... In the, there we are, that's better, isn't it? All right. Okay. Um, oh, I, I must say, I did put uh, on my Facebook... I'm on Facebook, by the way, if you want to join me on there. It's Chris Reardon London. Look for Chris Reardon London. Me sitting there with a cup of tea and that. And I put... Uh, you know you can change the status at the top of the Facebook. And I put on there... How many pansies in a hanging basket in an English country garden? Because that is a song, actually. English country garden is a song. And I've slightly changed the words. How many hanging baskets... Uh, what, 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 what was it? How many hanging baskets... Oh, what, what, the, what were the words I put in there? How many hanging baskets... How many... Baskets hanging. How many baskets hanging in an English country garden? That's it. Because it is actually a whole song. Now, I did look around for a backing track to sing that to you. But alas, I have not been able to find one. So, I'll just sing it a cappella. Or what I could do, actually, is possibly play it on the piano and prepare it for the next show. What do you reckon? Let me sing you a quick verse. How many kinds... I've got the words in front of me on a screen, you see. So that's why I'm looking to the left now. How many kinds of sweet flowers grow in an English country garden? We're telling you now of some that we know. Those we miss, those we miss, your surely pardon. Daffodils, hearts, ease and flocks. Meadow sweet and lady smocks. Gentane, lupin and tall hollyhocks. Roses, foxgloves, snowdrops, blue forget-me-nots in an English country garden. Do you like that? <laughs> we like to have a bit of a sing-song now and again. I have got to sing for someone in a couple of weeks' time, but not yet. Oh, hang on a minute. No, nope, not yet. Let me just check that. No, not yet, because a young lady, a young lady has been listening to United Kingdom talk for two years, but not yet. In a couple of weeks. Don't worry. The email is ready and standing by. Anyway, on the Facebook thing, you can put a status at the top. Generally, um, perhaps if you're doing something and you want other people to know about it. Or perhaps if you're in a particular mood. Now, some people, I'm afraid, on Facebook, um, they take it a little bit too far. And they're always putting how they're feeling and perhaps what their emotions are. And in all honesty, it doesn't look good to everyone else. To be honest, I wouldn't put, you know, for example, if, um, let me think now, um, if I'd, oh, I, I can't, if, if, I, if I'd just split up from someone, I wouldn't put on the Facebook, oh, I've just been dumped or, you know, feeling very upset about being dumped or something. I, you know, I, I, I just wouldn't do that. But I like to put on little things that, you know, might make someone smile or happy. That's what I like to do. I try and make people smile and happy. And I put on this thing, how many baskets in an Eng how many hanging baskets in an English country garden? And I got all these messages from people. Uh, from Jane, Jane in London, for example, who wrote to me, you're in a good mood today. I said, I try to be in a good mood all the time. Happy and smiling. I mean, be honest. If I was here looking miserable, you wouldn't want to mock that, would you anyway? OK, now and again, we talk about things that may make us feel sad, of course. Death, perhaps. Um, less fortunate people. Things like that. It's part of life. But the general ambience of the programme, I hope, comes across to make you feel friendly and hopefully a little bit happy. Right. And... I got all these messages from there, and for example, from Jane there saying you're in a good mood today, uh, but I'd spelt it wrongly, and I'd spelt uh, how, that was it. How many pansies in a hanging basket in an English country garden? How many pansies in a hanging basket in an English country garden? That was it. I remembered it now. 
And um, apparently I spelt pans is wrong and Jane corrected me. She says it's P-A-N-S-I-E-S. Not P-A-N-S-Y apostrophe S. So I then put it on there. Um, how many pansies? And I corrected it and I put in brackets, thank you to Jane. P-A-N-S-I-E apostrophe S. But apparently then someone else came on there and corrected me and said that I'd used an apostrophe and in this case an apostrophe wasn't necessary. So I had to do it again and remove the apostrophe. And I thanked the person, Daniel, Daniel um, <laughs> on Facebook, for correcting me. <laughs> and he says, you're welcome. Apostrophe abuse is a subject close to my heart. Millions of apostrophes are abused each year and nobody hears their cries. It needs to stop. Full stop. <laughs> so thank you for that. So it's interesting that. I wonder... Has anyone else put perhaps their status on the Facebook of perhaps how they're feeling or something funny or anything like that and found that it actually generated a lot of messages coming to you, which I think is quite a nice thing. Let me know if you've ever done that, OK? Email address to the show is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. I'm just keeping an eye on the time there. Um, now, from pasties... From, from pansies, we go to pasties, OK? From pansies to pasties, because that, that kind of works for me. Don't ask me how, because they're nothing like each other, are they? And we've got a, a new listener here. Hello to, G I think it's Gabe, G-A-B-E. Gabe, is that the correct word to say? Hello, Gabe. My name's Gabe, and I live in Georgia. Georgia, rainy night in Georgia. Oh, I love that song. Anyway, my name's Gabe and I live in Georgia, north of Atlanta, USA. I'm 37, married with a two-year-old daughter, Hayley. Hello, Hayley. Can she talk yet? Hello, Hayley. Hayley! Kiss, kiss. Kiss for your Uncle Chris on the cheek. Mwah. Thank you, Hayley. I came across your podcast several weeks ago and I'm now listening all the time. The way you waffle all over the place is great. Waffle, dear. Beg pardon? Waffle? What a cheek and liberty. It's a liberty. That's what it is, dear. It's a liberty. Now, are you are you just a listener or are you a viewer as well? Because you can watch or listen to the show by going to the main United Kingdom Talk website, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Okay? Unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk is the main site for the show. Hayley? Can I just give Haley another wave? Hi, Haley. Two years old. Have you learned to say mum yet? Mum. 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 Eh? <laughs> Waffle all over the place. It's a liberty. That's what it is, dear. Funny story the other day. I was driving in the car and I started whistling a little tune subconsciously. Well, I couldn't stop whistling this little tune and it was driving me crazy. And then it came to me. It was the theme song for your show. Oh, you mean this one? Hang on a minute. You mean this one, darling? Yeah. We love it. I actually do have a Christmas version of that which you will hear at Christmas. It's, very, it's a bit amateur, OK? I, I kind of put the extra bits on myself. But uh, there is a Christmas... I know! I can't play it now! You've got to wait to Christmas. That could be something to look forward to. Also, I haven't told you this, but as well as having the Christmas music, I also have, by my dear, dear friend, jason Allen, uk has created Christmas graphics for the beginning and the end of the show. Would you like to see them? Would you like to have a little sneak preview? Do you want to see them? No. Wait till Christmas. There's too much of that going on. Too many Christmas things appearing too early on. Not on this programme, my loves. You'll have to wait till Christmas for that, OK? 
So uh, it came to me. It was a theme music for your show. Just thought you'd get a kick out of that. Ah, I'm glad you like my little tune. It's nice, isn't it? Anyway, a quick question, she says. What is a pasty? You said you have a cheese and onion pasty a lot. I thought I thought at first I thought it was a pasta dish, but now I have no idea. No, a pasty is a piece of pastry, okay, wrapped around a filling, which my favourite filling is cheese and onion. So a cheese and onion pasty is like a cheese and onion filling with a bit of pastry around it. Now I didn't know uh, the Americans didn't didn't have such a thing that that has surprised me cheese and onion pasty you can also get cornish pasties cornish pasties are a bit like um mince meat chopped up uh, I, oh i don't know i actually i'm not quite sure of the meat type in cornish pasty and you'll get the ingredients but it's it's some sort of meat and potato and vegetables and again wrapped in a pastry and there's all sorts and there's also Another one I like is a chili bean pasty, which is really just chili beans. Beautiful. My wife and I do a podcast as well about comic books and pop culture mostly. It's fun doing it once a month or so whenever we get the chance. So uh, send us your um, little uh, URL address for that and we'll have a look at that. All right. Well, that's all from now. I just wanted to say good job on the show. Keep it up from Gabe. And thank you ever so much. It's nice to hear from new people, my darlings, now and again, as well as, of course, the regulars. Um... I think I'm out of time there today. I've still got some emails uh, from Suko uh, Judith, who I haven't heard from from ages and ages, and sent him some some wicked photographs of, of a storm they recently had. Uh, young David from the uh, visionlosshelp.com as well is there. And young Ian, oh, they're all here. We'll see how many more we can do on the next show, OK? Email address chris at United Kingdom Talk dot co dot uk chris at united kingdom talk dot co dot uk thanks for watching and listening to the show see you next bye bye now